Hello everyone, Clayton Vance here. We are going to go over some interesting stuff today. Um, this is the Timeless Homes podcast, and we're going to try to figure out how to do more timeless homes. That's the whole goal of what we're talking about, how to make the world a more beautiful place through good architecture. And I've run into some, um, just some of my own projects recently that I went and looked at, and there, man, there's still a lot of issues. And the issues that uh, come from general contractors hiring subcontractors who aren't honestly and if you're a subcontractor who's not as skilled as you ought to be or competent as you ought to be please please just pursue competence and just get better at your craft and become a real craftsman and people just aren't as as good they just don't build them like they used to because people aren't as good and uh I ran into one guy who still hasn't even moved into his house. He has water issues on his deck because the guy installed the the waterproof membrane wrong. And boy, it's just issue after issue, and and it can get kind of discouraging, particularly if you're building a house. And I don't want to discourage people from building because we need to we need to build more beautiful things, not just more things, but more beautiful things. And if you have ever considered using stone, which a lot of us have, and if you have the money to do it, you want to, you need to find an actual stone mason who understands what he's talking about and knows how to apply stone. Because with masonry today, we have a real, we have a challenge, we have an issue. And that issue is the fact that most stone is just a kind of a lick and stick applied surface, just like a and they just keep doing that, right? And so it's it's not something that's load bearing. It's not stone stacked on stone, stacked on stone. It's stone that's glued to the wall. And there's an enormous difference in what you can do with stone when it's applied in those two different ways. Because one is actually making a wall, one is just a surface treatment. And so on the surface treatment, you can do whatever you want to. The problem with whatever you want to do is it doesn't look like masonry. It doesn't look like load-bearing masonry. And that's one of the visual games that we're playing and trying to create more beautiful things is making sure that masonry actually looks like masonry. If you have an arch, if those stones were actual load-bearing stones on top of each other, and there was a whole bunch of stone on top of that stone, could it stand up without any of the actual structure it's stuck to? If you took all of the structure, all the actual um, engineering items, the wood, the steel, whatever, holding it up, could it still stand up? That's, that's the real test. And I remember one contractor laughed when I said that, and that's kind of the status of, or not the status, but the state of most the building kind of culture today is, uh, when, I, when I said we want to apply the stone in a way as if it was holding itself up because that's what we want it to visually look like is actual real masonry in the contractor. Well, it doesn't hold itself. And he just laughed at me. I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? Really? Okay. So we really don't care. No one cares. I care and you care because we don't want to be paying some guy $100,000 to put stone up really bad. In, my, in the area where I am, I mean, there's literally one company that I've been able to find that I would trust to actually do a real legitimate job in terms of a masonry thing. So what I want to go through is, is some of the some of the issues that I ran into with, with some recent projects. And I'm going to draw some things here so we can look at it. And this is really kind of more of an introduction. And then I want to go through, you know, a few weeks and put this together of this book, The Art of the Stonemason. I don't know if it's the best book, but it is a book that is actually really, really good. I've read through it once. We're going to read through it again. Um, I've also got these old historic um, masonry, proper masonry guides. And what I want to do from a visual standpoint, because we don't, uh, we don't actually build stone walls, what I want to do is for your for your sake as a consumer of architecture and and the, a patron 
who is paying a contractor and subcontractors to build this thing. So you know what you're talking about. You have an idea of what it is that you're looking at and you can be able to distinguish when something looks right and when it doesn't look right. And that's the goal of what we're gonna do. So if you've ever thought to yourself, man, there's just something missing here on this stone house. It just looks, it still looks cheap. Why does it still look cheap? We're gonna go through those issues and and um, how to, how to uh, properly apply stone if that's all it's, gonna be is just an application. So let's go through a couple things right now uh, that, that I run into over and over and over again. It's primarily has to do with fabricators and precast uh, stone details with fabricators. What I mean by precast stone is when um, you have a concrete mixture or some sort of mixture that's poured into a mold and then that's what you get is the the product that comes from that mold and and that's different than a dry cast, which is a product like Haddon Stone, which is also really cool. And so they pack in dry stuff and there's a, some adhesion that uh, makes it all kind of glue together really well and it's steam cured. And that's a pretty cool product too. But most of the time, the cheapest way to go is a precast. And, and these guys just have these standard molds that they do, standard thicknesses. And it's unfortunate because on a recent house that I did, I had called out on the plans for a full bed masonry and what a full bed masonry is is a um a four inch thick kind of the same d depth as a brick and but it's just it's expensive it's really expensive and so most people when they want to do stone opt out for the cheaper version which is just a thin veneer which is only an inch and a half inch inch and a half two inches thick that's just a lick and stick rather than a full veneer holds its own weight and it's it's applied more like brick and and so what happened with this particular house is that the contractor never told the fabricator of the lintels, the, which is the th piece that goes above the window, never told them that, hey, by the way, we're going to do a thin veneer rather than it's giant, um, rather than what was supposed to be a full bed masonry, which is a much thicker thing. And it gives you the depth in the window. So it actually looks like a real masonry house. And so when we got the, the um, precast stuff in. I, I was never given the shop drawings, which was a bad on the contractor's part, so I couldn't uh, see what was going on. And I went to the job site and all of a sudden all this stuff was there. I'm like, hmm, that's a little bit thick relative to what you decided to do with the stone. And so now the, the, the lintels stick out from the wall, you know, like two and a half, three inches, rather than it was supposed to be flush with the face of the wall. And that is one of the primary reasons why things look like they're lick and stick and fake is because the proportional relationship of the face to the face, of the face, the precast or material or to the, to the stone is, is so historically off that it would never be installed that way if it was an actual masonry building. And we have this kind of this subconscious thing like, oh yeah, that just, it feels right, but we don't know why. And I'm just pointing that out to you. So now you actually know why. And, that, and that's one thing to look for when, if you're building a house or if you're a stonemason or wh whoever's installing this stuff or a general contractor, it's one thing to watch for. The other thing to watch for with these precast guys, which I think it's a fine product, it's a great product, is they put their joints in the wrong spot. If I have a window and an opening like this. What, you, there's there's a, a lintel that goes above it, and that lintel is typically embedded into the, the adjacent stone, one to two to maybe three inches, and then depending on the actual design of all of this stuff, it may be embedded more, but not, not really. If you're using a wood lintel, then that's embedded a lot further because the tensile strength is generally thinner and a lot deeper, but that's for another discussion. But for a stone lintel or a precast condition, it's gonna be embedded into the stone a little bit. And I, there's another project I'm working on right now and the contractor just is not as astute as he ought to be and he put the lintel in this condition right here. Now tell me how, you'll have to look at what I'm drawing. What I've got is the lintel directly above the opening. Tell me how a lintel is supposed to be holding any of the weight of all of this stuff above it. If it is the same width as the opening, it's above. It would just fall, it falls because it's not resting on anything. And, and, and the fact that the contractor didn't get that memo, 
I don't understand that. I do, and the, the, the precast guy, the fabricator, I don't understand. But just because it's liquid stick applied, it doesn't need to be embedded in the stone because it's actually not holding up its own weight, nor is it holding up anything else. But visually, it looks stupid. And that's why some of these things, it's like, huh, how come that looks weird? That's one of the reasons things look weird. And, and, so it, and, and then sometimes they'll be too thin, sometimes they'll be too tall, or like short or too tall, and they're just wonky proportions. If you use a general rule of thumb, like one-fifth to one-sixth, the width of the opening should be the height of the lintel. It's like, okay, you'll probably be correct most of the time. Um, but here's another thing that these guys do wrong all the time, is they'll put a joint right there, like right in the center. It's like, tell me how that works. Once again, you're gonna have these two things just fall in on each other. Just blurp, blurp, just fall down because it's not holding anything up. It's just, it's, it's, nothing, nothing would stay up these days if it was actually reliant on itself to hold itself up. If it, because it's, it's just dumb. So if you're a precast company, please, Understand how, how lintels, uh, where joints should be in lintels. You can do a keystone because now all of a sudden you're creating an arch. Whereas if you take the corner point, the corner point of this, these two openings and you come down at like a 60 degree equilateral triangle. And then what you've done is you've just created the spring point of your arch. And, and, and so from that point, you can begin to find out, this is the same with jack arches. Every, all the angles of whatever goes on that lintel will radiate from that spring point. And that's when something will look right, is when it's geometrically designed based on actual physics. But because we're not limited by physics anymore, apparently, because they're just applied things, boy, that is where we just go wrong over and over and over and over again. And, and it just looks cheap. But those are, those are a few just really common errors that I run into just over and over and over again um, when people are doing stone applications on houses that I just can't seem to I just can't seem to get over uh, the hump with these these subcontractors so join us as we continue down the journey down the art of the stonemason and, and look at the visual, um, visual results of the actual um, applied stone as if it were a full stone building or stone wall. Uh, and then that will give us all of, the, all of the visual richness that we need. And if you're using a thin veneer, double frame in your windows and recess that sucker so it doesn't look like the stone is only that thick. If you can double frame in your windows, you'll, you'll mess up your sills and everything on the inside, but from the outside it won't, it, it won't look cheap because when you have windows and stone all at the same plane, it's just an, another one of the reasons houses look way cheaper than they should. Anyway, those are a few of my frustrations right now, so join us as we continue to look at the proper application of stone to be visually authentic. This is Clayton Vance, and we'll see you next time.